Welcome to Quick Mocker. In this video we'll show you how to use our local forwarder feature on a real-world sample of webhook integration and testing on the local machine. But first imagine, you are a software developer. Okay, you are really a software developer if you are watching this video, and imagine that you are developing yet another application that communicates with some third party, could be anything like PayPal, Stripe, GitHub, Bitbucket, Zoom or whatever else. And everything goes well while the application that sits on your local environment performs direct requests to the remote or a third-party web service. But sometimes instead of sending requests to the remote, your application might need to receive a request back from this remote. It will be some notification about an event that occurred on a third-party side. In most of the cases this event was not triggered by you or your app, instead it was initiated by third-party or one of its clients. So, you'll need to create a web service in your application that can receive requests from the third parties. This type of web service and a communication method overall is called a webhook. But because your application is still on your local machine, you cannot receive requests from the remote. Of course, you can try exposing your app through your public IP address or maybe pushing your app to some remote server and doing your testing debugging there. But those options are not very convenient and sometimes they are not even possible for you. Quick Mocker provides a better alternative approach which is far more easy to use. All you need is a browser and free Quick Mocker account. It will allow you to perform even a live mode debugging of your webhook notifications, for instance using Visual Studio Code and Xdebug or any other code editor and debugging tool. To demonstrate Quick Mocker Local Forwarder, we have prepared a small app and API using JavaScript, PHP and MySQL. This simple app makes a test payment using Stripe API, by the way, you can grab it from GitHub using git clone command, the link to the repository is in the description under the video. Let's set up this simple app quickly. First clone the app to your virtual host directory. Run composer install in the root folder. Copy config sample file inside api config folder. Name it simply config. Provide your database access credentials. Create a new database. Run the SQL script located inside the API schema SQL file to create a payment intent table. Assuming you have already created a Stripe account, we'll go to the Stripe dashboard, Developers, API Keys section. From here we will copy the publishable and secret keys and paste them inside our config file. We'll create a new quick mocker account. and a new project. Open this project. Add a new endpoint with HTTP method equal to post and URL path equal to API slash stripe hyphen webhook dot PHP. Copy the endpoints URL using the quick copy button and go to Stripe dashboard again. Open the webhooks section. Click add endpoint, paste the quickmockers endpoint URL. Select all the payment in 10 events. Click add endpoint. Copy, signing secret, and paste inside the app's config file. This is required to confirm that the remote request from Stripe is not spoofed. Alright, we are done with the sample app installation. Let's open it in the browser. If all is good, you are supposed to see the following payment form. We will perform two test payments and check its status through the database manager. First let's see what happens without the local forwarder turned on. Complete the payment form, enter the test credit card number, any expiration date and CVV code. Submit the form. We'll switch to database manager to see the new payment intent record and its status. Switch back to the browser. Let's complete payment operation by submitting 3DS confirmation provided by Stripe SDK for the testing purposes. View database manager again. As you can see, nothing has changed about our payment intent record. Now let's set up local forwarder. Go to quick mocker. By the way, you can see an icon on top of the requests log tab with a number of new requests in it. When we switch to this tab, we'll see all the intercepted requests being sent by Stripe to us. We'll hit the set local forwarder button and add our localhost app base URL. When you enter the URL with non-secure protocol, you'll see a warning message at the bottom. By default browser security policy does not allow to send requests from secure origin to non-secure. So, either you have to use SSL certificate for your localhost or you can allow insecure requests for QuickMocker web app from your browser. To do this inside Chrome browser, click the lock icon next to the site address. Go to Site Settings. 
find insecure content property and make sure it is set to allow. Alright, now we can try to do a second test payment. Open the app in the browser. Simply click the submit button and it will create a new payment intent record in the database. Let's check it. New record is there. Back to browser. Complete the payment confirmation. Switch to database manager and as you see the payment status has been changed now. Great. Local forwarder works. Finally we want to show you that you can perform webhook debugging even through the code editor. For this, let's open Visual Studio Code. We assume that you have already configured the debugging tool. In our case we are using PHP xDebug. Run the debugger. Open Stripe webhook file. Add a breakpoint at any line of code. Switch to our app in the browser one more time. Hit submit button. As you see, the webhook signal arrives even before the payment confirmation. Let's check for instance the status of the payment intent. Complete debugging. If you want to check your webhook service response, simply go to the quick mocker. Expand the log record. All the forwarded requests will have an additional tab forwarder response. Open this tab to view your webhook service response. Last but not least, make sure that core's policy and options method is enabled for the webhook service. Without this you'll get an error from the local forwarder. Thank you for watching this video. Give us your like and do not forget to subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions regarding the local forwarder, drop a comment here. See you next time.